everybody can agree, especially in England, uh, that this is a crisis where it's a made in USA label and uh, that we exported our toxic mortgages, uh, that, uh, in fact, we send a thank you note all the time to Europe for buying so many of our toxic mortgages. We sold about 40% of them to Europe. And uh, had it not been for that, the downturn in the US would have been much worse. There were three parts of the response. The first was uh, a stimulus. And when Obama got elected, it was good that he finally got around to it. Bush didn't, didn't do anything about this, but it was too small and it was not well designed. We're not going to be out of this crisis very quickly. One of the things that will be emerging out of this crisis is the realization that countries that have bigger reserves did better. And so there'll be an even greater demand for savings and that will again reduce global aggregate demand. We have failed really to reform our global economic system. We have failed to reform uh, our regulatory system failed to uh, provide the kind of uh, economic system that would provide stability and security. And the result of that is that uh, these economic weaknesses are going to persist. Do you think the American taxpayer has been ripped off, in essence, by the bailout? The American taxpayer, very clear, got cheated very badly. In the typical pattern in the chaos of a crisis uh, the bankers who cause the crisis then steal money massively because uh, people aren't noticing then. And I said, oh, God, this is going to happen again in the United States. I hoped that we had better institutions, but what it turned out is that we had better mechanisms for theft. It's such an elementary issue of incentives. If you're too big to fail, then you have incentive to gamble because if you gamble and win, you walk off with the profits. If you gamble and lose, the government picks up the tab, uh, why not gamble? I think the UK did it much, much better in three ways. First, uh, you, you had some sense of accountability that you, some of the CEOs had to go. Secondly, you put some conditions. We didn't put any conditions, so we allowed the money to pour in and pour out. And we gave the story that we had to recapitalize the banks in order to help them lend, but if money is pouring in and pouring out, that's not recapitalizing the banks. Thirdly, you try, uh, it wasn't totally successful, but you tr understood you wanted the banks to start lending. And you try to get some incentives, some institutional yeah. reforms to get the banks to lend. The criticism, some of my work that I don't understand, you know, I, I, I'm very good at identifying uh, 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 market failure, but I'm a little bit less uh, astute in, in talking about government failure. Uh, let me say that anybody uh, in America who's lived through the Bush administration understands government <laughs> failure. We have to think much more carefully about how we spend money. So I'm very critical of the hundreds of billions of dollars that we spend in the United States on weapons that don't work against enemies that don't exist. Um, we get neither security nor economic growth. So that seems to me a, a, a good target for cutting and reallocating re that money to investments that will lead to higher growth and therefore lower uh, national debt in the long run.